The noisy descent into the pitch black of Israel Chemical UK's Bulby Potash and Salt Mine, 1.1 kilometres the deepest working mine in Britain, is a nerve-wracking, bone-jarring, seven-minute drop. Well, that is a long way down, isn't it? <laughs> but what greets you as you emerge from the cramped cage lift is a brightly lit hive of subterranean activity. We've just come down the shaft, 1.1 kilometres. We've got about a 600 metre walk now. Leading the way through the warren of shafts, passageways and tunnels is the director and senior scientist at the Bowlby Underground Laboratory, Professor Sean Paley. Take about 10 minutes to get to the uh, underground lab. Set up in the early 1990s, the lab which has evolved into the UK hub for experimental dark matter research, takes advantage of the insulating properties of the layers of rock overhead to shield sensitive equipment from the constant bombardment of cosmic rays, white noise that would swamp the subtle signals astrophysicists are looking for. Just entering the current underground lab. The lab itself fits snugly into the rectangular contours of the tunnels we've been walking through. It's almost as if someone had flipped a series of oversized sea containers onto their side and slid them end to end into one of the worked out shafts. Inside though, it's bright and clean and arranged all along one wall are a series of experimental machines and tanks that reads like a chronological history of dark matter detection. So this machine here and this machine here are both part of a project called Drift. Up there are two detectors that are part of the Zeppelin project and these are the, the newer batch of detectors. But it's no longer just about dark matter detection. Increasingly, other branches of science are realising the potential of Bulby's low interference environment. So what we're looking at here is applying a technique known as muon tomography. In an annex at the end of the lab, Sheffield University's Professor Lee Thompson's investigating whether another kind of particle detector that tracks muons could be used to monitor carbon dioxide stored in depleted oil and gas fields as part of a future carbon capture and storage program. It essentially can be thought of as a, a sophisticated x-ray, so we should be able to essentially say something about how the carbon dioxide is moving and how it is impregnating that uh, depleted oil field or gas field. We are basically scooping up and collecting the organisms coming out of the wall. And in another area off to one side, Sam Paler from the UK Centre for Astrobiology in Edinburgh is analysing samples from briny seeps in the salt rock walls, looking for signs of life that could exist on other planets. We go to Mars, we see salts on the surface of Mars, and we, we believe those salts descend into the deep subsurface of Mars. So the more we learn about the, the environments here, the more we learn about the organisms that live in the similar environments on Earth to those we think are in the sur subsurface of Mars. It looks like a test tube with some dirty water and, and quite a lot of salt it in is. it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, you find life in the strangest of places. Hi, John. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. How are you doing? Here we are in a new laboratory we're building down here. In fact, so many scientists are clamouring to get down into the shielded environment of the Bowlby mine, the laboratory's undergoing an ambitious expansion programme. To us, it's a wonderful hole in the ground with uh, lovely steel walls, steel floor. It's on its way to being a, a great science lab. And it is literally hewn out of the rock, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's, it's a cavern that the mine have dug for us and we're about to line it with clean room walls and, and a floor and then everything we need to support the experiments and the science we want to support down here. And what will you be doing? We're going to carry on doing the stuff we're doing in the current lab and more. The science that you can do in underground labs is, is growing and becoming more and more diverse and so this should keep us going for the next 10 years at least. Ten years in which Sean Paling and the other physicists at Bowlby will have to share their new lab. But then, for an increasing number of sciences, it seems, getting down in the dark, quiet depths is the new black.